السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Brothers, sisters, man, watching and listening in. Inshallah Taala, today I want to talk to you guys about zina. Zina is a sin. Some of you may or may not know. I'm going to explain it to you very briefly, but then we're going to go into it in a bit of detail. Zina means to engage in illegal sexual intercourse. Who made it illegal? Allah. What are the types of zina that are illegal? There's two types. There's a type of zina that you do when you're not married. You might have a girlfriend. A girl has a boyfriend. And what does she do? She sleeps with him. She has sex with him. He has sex with her. This, in English, you call it fornication. They fornicate. They like to put fancy, nice names. They say, "Oh, we're making love. Oh, we, you know, oh, we slept together." No, this, this, this is called fornication. You're fornicators. The other type of zina is when a person who's married, he has a wife, but then he goes to another woman who he's not married to. Or there's a woman she's married, she's got a husband, but then she goes to her next man, and she has sexual intercourse with him. This is called adultery. Adultery is when who does zina? A married person. Fornication is when a person who's not married does it. You understand? Both of them are doing it with someone that they're not married to. The difference is one is a person who's not married. He or she is a fornicator. The one who is married is an adulterer. <clears throat> now some of you may be confused and some of the parents may be confused why we're talking about this to little kids. But the reality of the matter is my honorable uncles, aunties who might be listening in. Your children are being taught sex education at school. They're being taught this whether you like it or not. Even that form that you fill in where you say no don't teach them. Believe me they taught it. Maybe you should take a look at the syllabuses. It's our job to do this, to know what our youngest and our kids are being taught. And today I want to talk to the parents and the elders just as I want to, much as I want to talk to the kids. Because the parents have got a huge disconnect with regards to the reality of what their kids are going through. Some of you parents with respect are going to be shocked if you were to go through your children's phones, if you were to go through their history, you'll find your sweet 10, 11, 12 year old son, daughter watching pornography. And if they're not, then alhamdulillah, Allah has saved and protected your child. But still don't be lackadaisical. Still don't lose caution because they still have many more years. In fact, harder years to come. They've got to go through secondary school, college and university, dare I say. When they live out, that's an even bigger problem. So you need to keep a hold on this. So today we're having Islamic sex education. We're going to learn about this from an Islamic perspective. But we're not going to look at it from all of its angles. We're going to look at it from one angle. I have one objective today, my young brothers, my young sisters who might be listening. I have one objective today, that when you walk away from here today, you walk away knowing how disgusting zina is. You walk away knowing how filthy having sex with someone who you're not married to is. Because you can do it with your wife or your husband. No problem. In fact, you get rewarded for doing it with them. When you do it outside of marriage, this is filth. And the reason we need to go through this is because in our day and age, it's not seen as filthy. In fact, they tell you sex sells. You want to sell a phone, put a sexy woman in the ad, right? I'm on Instagram. I'm on Instagram. Who's got Instagram? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Do you guys get the ads that come up on Instagram? Every time I'm like, yo, okay, they, they want to promote health and fitness. They want to promote a dentist. They want to promote something random that's got nothing to do with sex, but they have to put a woman on their half naked. Because they're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to indoctrinate you to make you feel this is okay. In fact, they've already indoctrinated you, as we'll see. Inshallah, ta'ala, as time goes on. Who's got? Who's who, who's ever clicked on the Explorer page on Instagram? It's a problem. You know how I? You know you know I don't I don't that 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 for me. That's that's, that's the no go zone button. If I ever have to click it because I want to search for something, it's how I do it. Literally, and people know I, I put my hand over. And I don't look and I just quickly, because I kind of learn where the, where the letters are on the pad, I just type in the name of the person that I want to search, you know, if I want to search for the account. That Explorer page is enough to tell you how open sex has become. 
and selling sex and naked women and naked guys and whatever have you. So I want you to walk away today feeling disgusted by this act. And I also want you to walk away feeling scared. Because it's from one of the greatest sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes people with severely. And you're going to be shocked inshallah ta'ala when you learn what we're going to share today as seriously how severe the punishment for this is. Without any further ado, let us first go through some problems, some evil effects that come from sex outside of marriage. Some evil effects. Bismillah. Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah is a great book called Adaw al Dawa. In this book, he mentions some of the evil effects, some of the evil consequences that come as a result of sex outside of marriage. What we call zina. The first one he mentions is that it, it destroys the lineage. Does anyone know what a lineage is? Lineage means your, your family, your family tree. It destroys the family tree. Shall I tell you how it destroys the family tree? If someone gets pregnant and she's not married, she has sex outside of marriage, when that baby is born, what happens to the baby? Does anybody know? That baby doesn't have a dad. That baby doesn't have a dad. Even if that man says, I'm going to stay and provide for this baby, you can provide for this baby if you want, but this baby is not your dad. In our Sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it. But the only time a person will have the right of being a father is if they got a baby through marriage. If you have a baby outside of marriage, then that child is called walad zina. It's called a child that was born out of wedlock. Is the child evil? No, the child has done nothing wrong. The child is innocent to the crime. The crime is with the child's mom and dad. One of the punishments of the parents is that that child, that those parents cannot say this is my child. That means, you know when, when, you, when your dad dies, what happens? You inherit from your dad, right? No, you can't, you can't. The child is born of zina, they can't inherit because they don't have a dad. When, when, let's say it's a girl, she wants to get married. Who marries off the girl? Her dad, the wedding, the guardian marries. No, can't. She don't have a dad. The, 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 the Muslim ruler or the one that the Muslim ruler appoints as like a judge or whatever has to marry her off. No doubt. To the extent, but if the girl that's born outside of marriage is a girl who is, she's a woman, she's a, she's a female, that man who's her biological father, yes, she has to wear hijab in front of him. She can't come in front of him, she can't touch him, he can't hug, kiss my daughter, no, none of that. None of that. Imagine how many people walking around today. How many people walking around today? And they got what? They were illegitimate children. That's not your child. And when you do that, wallahi, imagine the stress and the regret in your life that you are. You just, a, a child just came into this world because you couldn't keep it inside your trousers. Or a girl couldn't keep her bloody legs closed. So now she's got a baby who don't even have a dad. All of these are consequences that come later, but we, we're heedless of it. But then some will say, okay, well you can abort the baby, right? That's what they teach you in RE. Who goes to RE? Who goes to RS? Religious studies, religious education. Have they brought this up? Have you guys done this? When they talk about abortion, have they done it yet? Right? Maybe when you're a bit older, they'll do it. 100% of the GCSEs, they'll do it. They'll talk to you about abortion in detail. They try to tell you it's okay, you can do it. <coughs> abortion is murder. You know, murder is of, of types, not all murder is the same. All murder, all murder is punishable severely. All murder is punishable severely. It's all, it's, it, no murder is taken lightly, but from it, within it, there are murders are different. All murder comes, shirk is the worst crime. Shirk, which is kufr, is the worst crime. Then after shirk, it's murder. So anyone who murders, they're going to taste that punishment in their whole fire if Allah doesn't forgive them. But then you have murdering a disbeliever. What's worse than murdering a disbeliever is murdering a believer. From the greatest, most evilest times, types of murder is to murder a child. In Surah Al-Takwir, when Allah is describing the way the Day of Judgment will take place, when the world ends, the stars will come crashing down and all sorts of things are happening. The celestial events are taking place. The oceans have caught fire. Everything is being destroyed. And then Allah skip, he jumps forward to the scene on the Day of Judgment. When the little girl, Allah says, will be asked, the little girl who was killed, she was aborted, or she was murdered after being born. She will be asked, for which sin were you killed? Be 
For which sin was she killed? Why did you murder this girl? Why did you abort the girl? So then what happened? You combine zina with murder. So you can't abort. It's worse. Okay, what's the second thing that Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah says? He says, it, if a person engages in sex outside of marriage, what happens is that you take away the protection from your private part. Now why is this important? It's because shyness is a part of Iman. al hayau shu'batu min al-Iman. Shyness, modesty. We, in my language, in Urdu, we say sharam. Has anyone heard that? We say sharam hayaniya. Sharam niya. This person not have any modesty, don't they have any, don't they have any shyness? Sharam, it's a part of Iman. It's a branch of Iman. Now, why is it that you won't swear in front of your mom? Because you're shy. You're sharam, right? Why won't you swear in front of shyness? Why won't you go still when someone's watching you? Even if you're a thief, why? Because you're shy. You're shy. Why, don't, why won't you watch pornography in, in school? Like you're sitting in class in the front, everyone's sitting behind you, just pull out your phone and just type in and then start watching porn. Why won't you do that? Because you've got shyness, right? But then a person who walks outside of the house, a girl who puts on makeup, tight clothes, to go see a guy, a guy who gets ready, puts his cologne on, puts his nice slim fit top on, gets into his car, gets into the bus, tops up his oyster, he heads towards the girl to link up with her, take her to a private location, look at all the steps. Zina doesn't, Zina's not like murder. Even though murder's evil, and I said murder is worse. But murder's like, okay, you got angry, you got a tool, you got a knife, poke him quickly and it's over, it's just gone. Zina's not like that. Zina's not like, well, oh, I feel horny, let me just jump onto the girl. No, it doesn't work like that. Zina has stages. First, you, you okay, babe, what are you saying? You're about you. Free, go link her, take her out for a date, sweeten her up, touch her, kiss her, lips her, take her into a private room, start making out with her further, strip off your clothes, strip off her clothes, then you go in and then you open up the legs and then you go in. This is the extent to which a person has to go. If you went through all of that, then you have no shyness. Your private parts are not protected, they've been uncovered. And the Prophet said, if you do not have any shyness, do whatever you want. If I ask you a question, would you rather, would you rather let your mum see you steal, or would you rather let your mum see you having sex with a girl? Which one would you rather have? Sisters, would you rather your dad see you have sex with a guy? Would you rather your dad see you steal? Which one? Both of them have capital punishment in the Sharia. The one who fornicates gets lashed a hundred times. Of course, not in this country, but in the Islamic land. The one who steals has his hand chopped off. Both of them have severe punishments. But which one would you rather your mum see? You'd rather say, okay, mom, see, see me still and let my hand get chopped off. You'd rather that than let her see that because of the shyness. But if you got to a point where you were fornicating with a girl and you didn't care that Allah was watching you, then you've got no shyness. That means you're going to murder easy. That means you're going to steal easy. If you could do that, then you're not going to care if Allah sees you swear. You're not going to care if Allah sees you steal. You're not going to care if Allah sees you, you know, swear and cuss and backbite. Everything else is easier. Making sense? So that's when I have a problem. When the private parts are not protected, any sin will come. The third thing that Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim mentions that comes as a result of zina is what? Is the fact that so many other sins that are linked to it, which are haram, now people will start doing it. For example, music. Is music connected to zina? Is music connected to sex? It is, right? So, a person who wants to engage in sex is going to be listening to these songs, is going to be listening to these slow jams, these R&B tracks, or these filthy songs, this rap music, hip-hop music, dancehall music. Everything is so filthy in there. So they're going to be engaged in music. Is clubbing engaged with Zina? Yeah, because where do you go to pick up a girl? Where do you go to one night stand? If you're roasting, you're feeling like, you know, whatever, you're going to go to the club. You're going to say, let me go to a ring. And let me take a girl, let me find her. So then you're going to start clubbing, you're going to start dancing, listening to music. What about alcohol? What about alcohol? Is alcohol not connected to this? Of course alcohol is connected to this. What about masturbation? Is that not connected? Yes it is. Pornography. Yes, all of these are sins. And they're all connected to zina. What, 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 about, what about stealing? What about haram money? Why, why do guys like money? Because money is how they get the girl. Why do girls like guys? Because the guys got the money. You understand? So then the guy knows, okay, the girl doesn't really want me. She wants money, but I want her. So I know the only way to get her is money. 
Because we're in the judge card anyhow, brother. Abu Rayyan Adnan, he was saying, what are you saying? He said, don't get it twisted. The people who are in this music team, they're not in this music team because they want money. They're there because they want the girls. The girls is what they want. So you're going to make music haram. You're going to do drugs haram. You're going to do what? You're going to take loans. Look, when a man wants a woman, it's and then, look, even, even if he wants to marry her in halal, what the dad will say? Bring the dowry, bring the mahram, £20,000, £50,000. How am I going to get this? Go to the bank, take a loan. But the bank gives me interest, you're not going to marry my daughter. It's a problem. It's a problem. Okay? Even if you want to marry a girl halal, you make money in a haram way. Then what about the guy who doesn't even want to marry her? He just wants to get in between her legs. He's going to make money haram whatever way he possibly can. He's going to do fraud. He's going to get a job in a haram place. He's going to sell drugs. He's going to work in a bank. Oh, look, there's illegal haram and there's even legal haram. The legal haram is working in a bank. Do you want the curse of Allah? You're going to get a job working with interest, riba? Working with selling alcohol, selling this, selling that? It's a problem. It's a problem. So these are all things that come from zina. Not only that, you bring corruption and facade to a, someone's daughter. That girl you sleep with is someone's daughter, bro. You want that to happen to your daughter? That girl that you sleep with is someone's sister. Think of your sister right now. You love your sister, right? You don't know, no one going near your sister, right? The same way, if you go near to a girl, she's got a brother that don't want no one going near her either. And some of the ulama they explain, based on the hadith of the Prophet, which I won't mention because it's going to be long, I mean, you could do it in the Q&A, but one of the punishments for a person the zina is that it will come back to your own sister or your daughter or your mom or your auntie one of your women the same way you didn't take care of another man's sister even though she was your sister in Islam another man's gonna come violate your sister and of course hatred and enmity occurs between the people إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةَ Allah said, verily, the believers are brothers. But the brotherhood goes. The brotherhood goes and we become enemies. Look, it's brave. What? What? My sister. Let me wake him up. Let me move to him. Let me show him what time of the week is. My sister! Mad! People get killed over this. You know, sadly, no, people don't get killed over it anymore because, oh yeah, the guys have lost. They've lost what you call protective jealousy and honor for their women. Oh, yeah, 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 my sister showed me listen. A brother came to me the other day, well, I was shocked. A brother from my ends came to me. He said, one of my friends, his sister, half of Hounslow has slept with her. She's like, Hounslow's my, my town where I'm from, West London. He said, half of my area has slept with him, her. I'm thinking, what kind of a brother is that? If he knows, if he knows and he didn't do nothing about it, Allah is going to ask him on the day of judgment. And there's other problems that Imam Ibn Qayyim didn't mention, which are contemporary to our time. A guy, he goes and sleeps with a girl, one night stand in a club, she gets pregnant, has the baby. He doesn't love her. She's going to leave. But let's say in the worst possible situation, he tries to stick around. He says, you know what, I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to try and provide for this baby. But there was no love in that marriage, so ultimately he's going to leave. She's left as a single mom to raise that child. <coughs> Now sometimes she's not even going to raise a child, she's just going to go and do her own thing and just kind of just be there as like a part-time mum. That means what's going to happen, the child is going to be raised by the streets or she's going to work a job or a double job even. But that's a mum who needs to be there for the child. So she's not in the house raising a child. Who's raising a child? The child is walking around the estate and he just knows drug dealers. He just knows pimps. He just knows killers and murderers. So they raise him. He don't have no role model in life. His mum ain't no role model in life. His or her role model is the drug dealer. He wants money, he's got money, so he's gonna teach him, listen, that's how you make money now. <coughs> and what happened? That was from Zina. And that child's gonna grow up. And he's from, from Zina, from one time you had sex and a child was born and that child had no one to take care of him. That one child is gonna become a shake, go into the community possibly. That child is gonna go out there and rob. Cause that's what we learned from. He never had parents to teach him don't rob. He had gangsters to teach him rob. So he's gonna rob. He's gonna deal with drugs. He's gonna sell crack. He's gonna sell meth. He's gonna sell all sorts of things. He himself is gonna go to the club, sleep with about two or three other women, have five, six illegitimate children running around. That cycle's gonna repeat. Those kids are gonna be born, gonna do the exact same thing until you've got a whole nation of fornicators and a whole nation of illegitimate children who don't have no fathers to raise them. And that comes what? Just from one, one idiot who couldn't keep it in his legs, in his trousers. And that's just one example. 
Abu ibn Qayyim didn't even mention, and these are problems that are contemporary. Now we've talked about the corruption that it causes in the land. Brothers and sisters, I want us to become very, 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 very clear about how evil of a sin it is before Allah. Does it sound bad right now? It sounds bad, right? But we know that there are many sins. It, where, where does this fall? Is it number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Where on the scale does this fall in terms of evil? Where does it fall? Imam Ahmed, I told you shirk is the worst, right? Shirk means that there is a, that Allah, you want to worship him, but you know, you worship someone else beside him. You worship Jesus, for example. You say, I'm going to go to Allah through Jesus. Or how some people do, they say, we're going to worship the Prophet. They won't tell you it's worship, they tell you we're honoring the Prophet. They say, we're going to make dua to the Prophet. A dua is ibadah, the Prophet said. So if you make dua to the Prophet, you've done shirk, you left Islam. On the spot, you left, you're gone. You're a kafir, you're a mushrik now. You're a Muslim. You can't be buried with the Muslims. The women, Muslim women can't marry you. You're gone. That's a problem. So that's the worst. That's the most evil of sins because Allah created you, honored you, gave you everything just so what? You can now worship Him, know Him, say thank you to Him, but you worship another man or you worship a rock or an idol or a tree or a saint or whatever else it is. That's the most evil sin. Number two is what? Al Qatr. Murder. To take the life of an innocent person. The rights of Allah first and the rights of the people. What's the third worst sin? If murder is second, look at what Imam Ahmed said. He said, لا أعلم بعد قتل النفس شيء أعظم من الزنا. He said, Imam Ahmed is who? Imam Ahmed is who? Imam Ahmed is Imam Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That was his name. He was the Imam who through him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the aqeedah, the belief of the Muslims. And if you don't know, you have to get to know. I can't spend too much time in the Sheikh's biography. He said, I don't know any sin that is greater after murder other than zina. Meaning he says zina is what? It's number three. If sins had a, if sins had a Richter scale, number one being the worst, which is shirk, two being second, which is murder, zina would be three. Zina is a third. So think about it. Who likes to lie? Who likes to steal? Who likes to back? We always are wrong. Who likes to punch, fight, kick? No, no, you don't know these are sins. People will not do that. People will say, no, 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 don't fight. Don't, 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 don't beat this person up. Don't steal, but they'll fornicate. They will fornicate. This is very big in the, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So big that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He combined the punishment for all three of these evil sins as one thing. Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَا اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٍ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون. anyone who does any of these three evil sins they do shirk they make du'a to Allah they murder they kill people unjustly they take the life of a person unjustly ولا يزنون and they fornicate these are not the slaves of Allah these are not the slaves of Ar-Rahman sorry Allah said for them وما يفعل ذلك يلقى أثام they're gonna meet these people are gonna meet a punishment يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانة. Allah said they are going to have a punishment. رحمك الله. They're going to have a punishment which is multiplied. Their punishment will be multiplied. ويخلد فيه مهانة. They will stay in there for eternity. They are never going to come out. They are never going to come out. إلا من تاب. Except for the one who repents. And we're going to talk about the repentance. And how to seek forgiveness from zina at the end, inshallah. But know that this is how severe the punishment for this is. That Allah said, if you do murder, shirk, zina, your punishment will be multiplied. Multiplied. It's not going to be, no, you've done the zina, no, you get punished. For, no, this is a multiplication. You enter the hellfire. You enter it for eternity. And that's the person who repents. The danger to show you what's powerful here. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim said, that Allah connected zina, murder, and shirk together. Shirk, what the Christians do. Murder. And zina, Allah connected them together. And he said, Ya Allah. He gave the same punishment. Allah mentioned the same punishment for all three. To show you how evil this is. So the question is now, where does zina lead to? If you engage in this filthy act, where does this filthy act lead to? Brothers and sisters, it leads to a path of destruction. It leads to a path of chaos. It leads to a path of evil. Allah said, Wala taqrabu zina. Allah said, Don't do zina. Allah didn't say, Don't do it, sorry. Allah said, Wala taqrabu. Allah said, Don't go near it. 
So I'm gonna ponder in this ayah for a bit. Allah said, don't go near zina. Zina is what? It's a crime. I told you that you have to go through many steps to get to that crime, right? First you look at the girl, you walk up to the girl, you talk to the girl, take her out on a date, touch her, kiss her, da da da, private with her, alone with her, and then you take her clothes off, you take her clothes off, and then you do the act. So zina doesn't happen straight away. Zina has steps. So there's zina, and there's a road that leads to it. There's a wrong road that you have to take before you get there. Allah said, Wala taqrabu. Don't go near it. Why well, did he say don't do zina? He said don't go near it, which means don't go anywhere near that road. Don't, don't, don't look. Don't touch, don't smile, don't laugh, don't chat, don't be alone. Don't go anywhere. Anything that leads to zina, stay away from it. <coughs> Stealing, he said don't do it. Murder, he said don't do it. But zina, Allah said don't go near it. Because it doesn't have to stay away, straight away. People will be like, bro, it's only my friend. I'm just, it's just my friend. We're just friends. Are you? Is this near to zina? Because it is. Is if you were to say zina has steps, is this one of the steps? Can you can you do zina? Can you have sex outside of marriage with a girl if she's not your friend? Can you, can you, you have to make friends with her first, right? That's what we call it, girl friend, right? You have to make friends with her first, right? Boyfriend, right? Okay, good. So it's one of the steps. I must stay away from any of those steps. Have that looking, just looking. Stay away from it. Stay away from any of these steps because this will lead to zina. The one that Allah said, Inna hukana fahisha. Allah said, it is filth. It is disgusting. It is, it is, it is, it is ugly. What does fahisha mean? Fahisha is something that's ugly. Something that's disgusting. Something that's perverted. Something that when you hear about it, you're like, that's disgusting. What is this? This is filthy. <coughs> that is what fahisha is. It is something that's so disgusting that even the animals know this is wrong. Even the animals know this is wrong. Imam Bukhari he narrated that there was a companion, uh, brother Amr ibn Maymun, brother, sorry. Amr ibn Maymun, he said that when I was in Jahiliyyah, I saw two monkeys, a male monkey and a female monkey. And, you know, obviously monkeys, they have, obviously they don't have that like, marriage, but you know, a monkey will have his girl. That's his, that's his monkey chick. That's his monkey chick, that's his monkey girl, right? And then they get up to monkey business together. <laughs> That was funny, right? So, it's, it's a raw talk, and it's a crappy little joke every now again. So, look, they're getting up to monkey business, right? So, he said, When I was in Jehiliya, I saw a monkey guy and a monkey chick, and they were what? They were doing some monkey business. <laughs> but it wasn't that guy's monkey chick. He was, he was basically doing zina. He said, Then I saw all the other, Imam Bukhari noticed this, I saw all the other monkeys come together and they stoned both of those monkeys till they died. What is he trying to show from him? That even the monkeys, this is so filthy that even the animals, even the animals realize how filthy this is. That even the animals won't have this. What, you're taking a next man's chick? You're throwing a kid and you know, you, this ain't your chick, this ain't your monkey? Stone to the guy. That is how severe, that, so that's fahsha. Fahsha is something that even the animals know this is wrong. So then if you don't know it's wrong, and you don't, you don't, when you hear someone doing this, and you don't feel like, ah, this is disgusting, this is filthy, then what does that show you about you? That shows that maybe the monkey's better than you. Because then Allah says in the Quran that there are people that are like the cattle, like the cows and the sheep. Rather, there are those who are worse than the cattle and the sheep. A monkey understands fornicating is wrong. A monkey? What? I'm not gonna have it. You're gonna you're gonna hang around? You're gonna be friends? You're gonna be friends with guys who do this? You're gonna watch their videos? You're gonna go watch a movie that you know has a sex scene in there? You're gonna watch these YouTubers? You're gonna make friends with people like this? You're gonna hang around in the streets where you know what's happening? The monkeys can't take it and you can take it. What does that say about you and I? So Allah said it is it is fahsha. The reason he doesn't want you to go near it is because it's fahsha. Not just that, wasa sabila, and it leads it leads to an evil path. And we mentioned the evil path that it leads to. It leads to murder when you kill a child. It leads to murder when people kill each other. It leads to children being born without parents. It leads to the lineages being messed up. It leads to alcohol. Is it? We mentioned all the other sins that come from it. It's a filthy act that leads to an evil path. So when a person does not know that that path is taking you to the hellfire. Illa man tab, except for the one who repents. And we'll talk about the repentance at the end. Taking care of your private parts. And stopping your private parts from going into haram. And stopping your private parts from falling into zina. This has the opposite effect. Rather, it takes you to success. Not protecting your private parts, doing zina, takes you to the hellfire. Protecting your private parts is a path to success. Allah specifically mentioned in the Quran.
Surah Al-Mu'minun, where Allah describes the believers. The first ayah, Allah said, Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Allah said, certainly, verily, certain, aflaha al-mu'minun. Very aflaha al-mu'minun, the believers are successful. Who's successful? The believers. The kufar are successful. Which believers? Al-ladheera hum fi salatihim khashi'un. The ones who they pray their salah and they pray with concentration. They pray with khushu, with humility, humbling themselves before Allah. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Also the second characteristic that they have is that they, they don't listen to stupid speech. People are talking nonsense, swearing, cussing, backbiting, talking nonsense, they turn away. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ They give zakat. They don't, they, they give, they give the zakat to the poor. Then Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ Who are successful? Those who protect their private parts. And the only people that they go and that they have intimacy with, illa ala azwajihim, their wives. They're the only ones that they have intimacy with. O ma malakat aymanuhum. Fa'innahum ghayru malumin. If they have intimacy with their wives, no problem. If you want to make love to your wife and have sex with your wife, no problem. There's no blame on you. Rather, you get rewarded. Fa'manibita ghawra adalika fa'ulaika humul adun. Anyone who wants more than his wife, anyone who wants, I know I'm sorry, I'm being a bit direct here, but I have to mention this, okay? So, so you understand the point. Allah said, anyone who goes to other than his wife, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ So what's Allah talking about? The private part. The private part, who's allowed to come to it? Who are you allowed to not protect your private part in front of? Your wife. And vice versa for the wife to the husband. Allah said, if you bring your private part to anyone other than your wife, O مَا مَلَكَتْ إِمَانُونَ Allah said then, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ From then you are from the transgressors. Now what about people who masturbate? Your hand, is that your wife? Is your hand your wife? I'm asking a question, is your hand your wife? Your hand is not your wife. Allah said only your wives you can take the private part to. If you take it to your own hand, you're sinning. <coughs> sinning. Not permissible. And masturbation ultimately leads to zina. Does this seem big to you? Does this seem like it's quite, quite, quite a bad punishment? It does. You know what's sad? Is the way the people have made it so small. People have made it so small. Made it so small. Brothers and sisters, people when they engage in zina, they fall into poverty. Their life becomes short. Their faces become dark. People hate you. The people like the guy who's sleazy. The people like the guy who's sleazy, the guy who's always with chicks. He's got one girl, next girl, next girl, next girl, next girl. I don't respect him. He's not loved in the community. The people like the girls who like always open her legs to boys. What do they call her in school? What do they call her in school? Hmm? Huh? Call her slut. She's a hoe. They call her bad. No one likes someone who's always having sex. People start to hate you online. Your heart, it, it becomes sick. Or it dies. Person becomes depressed, becomes far from Allah and close to Shaitan. And when zina becomes apparent on the earth, it's from the signs of the Day of Judgment. As the Prophet said, the Hadith of Sahih Bukhari Muslim. The Prophet says, the zina is so bad. Zina, zina. Sex is so bad that it's not just you that will get punished. The whole people, your whole, your whole nation is destroyed. Allah destroys whole nations because of this. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, companion of the Prophet He said, riba and fornication. Who knows what riba is? Riba is when you deal with interest. Make haram money through interest. Credit cards, loans, university loans, all of this. When riba and zina, when these two filthy acts become apparent in the land, Allah's anger becomes so much that Allah gives permission for those people to be destroyed. To be destroyed. Look at the AIDS. Look at these STDs, chlamydia, chlamydia. 80% of people have chlamydia. 80% of people in the world have chlamydia. Sexually transmitted disease. Sorry, not in the world, in the West. France, UK. 80% of people have chlamydia. Why oh, shocking? An STD. 80% of humans are suffering. And there's AIDS, gonorrhea, and all these other diseases. Allah is destroying them. You think this is them process? Allah is destroying them. When, when they go and they, they, they want to turn themselves into men, and women want to turn themselves, the, 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 the men want to turn themselves into women, do you think that's them growing? This is a mental disease. 
And before anyone misquotes me, and I'm more than happy to bring to the environment to BBC and argue my case. Medically speaking, if you go to a person and you say, hey, if you go to a doctor and say, I'm going to cut my hand off, what would, they, what would they diagnose you with? A mental disorder. A person wants to commit suicide, what do they, what, what do they diagnose them with? A mental disorder. If I say, yo, 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 doctor, 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 I want to cut my nose off. I want to cut my hand off. I want to cut my leg off. What are you going to say? They're going to say, I have a mental disorder. So when a man comes to you and says, I'm going to take my private parts off so I can become a woman, you say, no, this is his freedom of choice. <laughs> He's, this, this is a mental disorder. I'm not saying this. this there, there are journals. There are medical journals written on this issue. <coughs> when a woman comes and says, I want you to remove my chest, my breast, cut it off, so I can be like a man. And you say, what, is her right? It's a mental disorder. Allah has inflicted them with this. Was it, they, they, they fornicate so much, so much, so much zina. Allah said, I'm going to give you a disease, AIDS, the likes of which never been seen before. I'm going to make you man, what? I'm going to give you this mental risk that makes you want to become the opposite gender. You people walking around saying, treat me like a girl and a guy. That's, this, this is Allah punishing them, and so much more. And now even Muslims are falling into this, and it will only increase. So because this punishment is so evil, brothers, and because this, puni sorry, because this sin is so evil, because this sin is so disgusting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a punishment for it in this life before the next. The punishment is that the person is either whipped and lashed a hundred times or the person is stoned to death and killed. They stone help one, two, three, four, one by one, till the person drops dead. Now let me just say very clearly and emphatically and unequivocally no one is allowed to take the law into their own hands. Not in the lands of the disbelievers where we live, because this is not from their law. So we can't impose our law on them when we're living under them, and this is their law that they have. This happens in the Muslim countries. And even in the Muslim countries, you're not allowed to do it. So don't go back home to Pakistan, see and see the, be like, oh, what, you were in that Bollywood movie, just take a little stone and <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that, that's not how it works. Even then there's a court process, and I'm going to mention what the process is in a second, I'll mention it. There's a process, there's a procedure, he has to go to court, the judge will see, will analyse that it is only the leader of the Muslims, who is the leader of the country, or the one that he places in charge, for example, a judge who will carry out that punishment. It's not for anyone to do. Why am I mentioning it to you? Why am I mentioning it to you? If it's not relevant to you directly in the sense where you're not going to go for it, you're not going to have to enforce it, so you realise that this is how severe it is. That Allah would, uh, this is what Allah, uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated that should happen to you if you do this crime. And when it happens, guess what? If you get stoned to death because you fornicated, or sorry, you did adultery, then what will happen is on the day of judgment, Allah won't ask you about it. You being stoned to death means the case is closed. The fact that you're not going to get stoned to death and you're not going to lash, get lashed should make you even more scared because there's no way to guarantee that it's been wiped away. You have to stand before Allah and Allah may question you about it. Okay, so remember that time you were that girl. Had you been stoned? But you, know, you weren't stoned, so let's talk about it now. So in a way it's good that you're not going to get stoned to death, but in a way it's bad. And you're going to have to be brought up on a day of judgment. And the punishment in the next life is going to be much worse. You'd, you'd, you'd want to be dead. Ya laytaha kanat al the person when he sees the punishment on the day of judgment will say, if only I was dead. If only I just became, I was just died, my life ended. He'll wish, kuntu to Rabba, he'll wish that he just became dust. That's how severe the punishment is. You'd say, Rabba, I wish I was not. I'm just mentioning that so no one goes out there and takes things out of context and starts saying, brother and mom was saying, well, we should go stone him. No. I'm just telling you what Allah said should happen in a Muslim country and even then with a court process that takes place. It's not for anyone to do. So the question is, the ayah that mentions that the people should get lashed, there's three things that are in this ayah that are shocking the way Allah talks about it, to show you how severe zina is, to show you how raw the punishment is. It's so severe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these three things that he didn't mention for other punishments, even though a lot of them do apply to the other punishments. Not all, but a lot of them. The first thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that one who does zina, for them, they feel a physical pain, a physical pain, and they also feel an emotional pain, a pain in their heart. Allah said, Azaniyatu wa zani fajridu kulla wahidati minhu ma'mi'ata jadda. 
anyone who does zina. This is only talking about the one who does it and he's not married. Not the one who's married. We're going to talk about the one who's married in a second. The one who does it and he's not married. She's not married. They do it outside of marriage. They're not married. Then for them it's a hundred lashes. Just a hundred lashes? No. The Prophet said, and also they need to be exiled from the land. They, 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 they told, get, get, they, for one year they have to leave the country, they have to leave the land. They can't live with the people. One year you have to go. You're gone. Why is the punishment to the body? So you feel the pain of what you've done. Why being exiled from the land? So what? You feel the emotional pain. When you come back, you're going to make sure, well, first I had a hundred lashes. And sometimes what could be more painful than a hundred lashes is being alone in isolation for a year. That might be worse. You want no one, no, none of your loved ones around. So that's a problem. What about the one who's married and he does it? He had a wife. Yeah, he went and did it with a haram. She had a husband, went and did it with haram. This person, they still get lashed a hundred times. Because the ayah Allah said, وَزَّانِيَةُ وَزَّانِي فَجْرِدُوا كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِنْهُمَا مِئَةَ جَلْدًا The one who fornicates, whether it's inside marriage, outside marriage, both of them get lashed. <coughs> but, Instead of being exiled from the land, the one who's inside of a relationship, he gets something extra, she gets something extra, they get stoned to death. They get stoned to death. The Prophet ordered for people to be stoned to death, you see. Ghamidiya, Ma'az, Sahab, Ya Allah, be pleased with them. I mean, because they, they, they sought forgiveness. There was another woman who he ordered to be stoned to death. The Prophet ordered this because he was carrying out the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one, you walking around, if you're not married and you do it, you're not going to get whipped, but just know that the punishment that is hanging over you is to be whipped a hundred times. One time you did it with a girl, whipped a hundred times and to be exiled from the land. And if that's not going to happen to you, then imagine what Allah is going to do to you on the day of judgment if you don't, if you don't seek forgiveness. And you don't, imagine, imagine, you're waiting. If you were whipped and lashed and exiled, then on the day of judgment, you wouldn't have to talk about it. But no, and you didn't repent and you kept doing it. Okay, so now Allah said, okay, we're going to talk about it now. We're going to talk about it. The one who's married and does it, for them they get stoned. If they don't get stoned, and he's walking around doing it, then guess what? That's hanging on him on the day of judgment. And what, do you think married people don't do this? Do you know what, do you know they did a statistic? of people who work in workplaces, in offices, in corporate offices, 40% of them engage in sexual intercourse. 40% of people who work in offices who are married engage in affairs. Affairs. You're married and you're having sex with another woman or another guy. They've made a whole website for it. I'm not going to mention the name in case any of you know, anyone gets excited and goes and jumps on there. They made a website just to cheat on your wife or to cheat on your husband. When, the, when, when it was leaked, the details and the information of the people who had signed up, You'll be shocked how many of them Muslim surnames like Khan, Pakistanis, Indians. How many of them Bengalis? I don't know a lot of them. You'll be shocked how many of them Muslim, Asian men, Asian women. So one might ask now, why such a raw punishment? Why such a severe punishment? The reason for the severe punishment, brothers and sisters, Imam Ibn Uthaymin, Rahimahullah, explains. Is because when a person does zina, when they when they when they experience that pleasure that comes from that evil act, the whole body feels that joy. The whole body feels that excitement, that, that, that happiness, that joy. It enjoys it. Because the whole body felt the joy in haram, now the whole body must experience the pain of the punishment. For that reason, that person is lashed one, two, three, till a hundred, and then exile from the land. The one who does it and he's married, it's even worse for him because he could experience it. He could have just gone home. The Prophet said, if you, if you go outside, you see a woman, you think, okay, she's nice, go back to your wife because your wife has what she has, what your wife has. She's called it halal. He could have gone home and had it with his wife. <coughs> and, but what? He didn't do that. So what did he do? He went in, went to step with another girl. So for him now, it's like, no, stone to death. It gets worse. What are the size of the stones? To show you the scholars, they discussed this. They said not too big. The stone can't be too big. You can't take a big fat boulder and smash it on the person's head. You know why? You know why? Because the person's going to die immediately. And we don't want them to die immediately. That's what the scholars they say. The whole reason for the punishment is that the person feels the pain. So you've got to have small stones. One by one. 
he's going to feel that pain. And the stone can't be too small either because then the punishment's going to be extra long and that's going to be a bit unfair. So it's going to be a medium sized stone. Not too big that the person's going to be conked out in one go, but not too small that it's going to go too long and the person is going to just suffer too much. It's got to be a medium sized average stone. How is the punishment given? A side point. In case any kuffar are listening, so they learn the hikmah of Islam. Number one, the punishment is given if four witnesses see. Who are these witnesses? They have to be just and upright people. Everyone in our society pretty much is not just and upright. So none of our statements should be accepted. We lie, we do this, we do that. So person has to be just and upright I mean, in the society. They have to see it. Four of them at the same time. What do they have to see? They have to see the man's private part going inside the woman's private part. In other words, they have to see the, the ink go, the pen go into the ink pot. Oof. Is that possible? Is that, is, that, is that something easy? That's something that's almost impossible to meet all these conditions. Four guys! And it can't even be that right. You're seeing someone do it and you just call your boys, you're like, come here quick. This guy will send, will send him to the judge fam. Call him. And everyone gets, no, no, no. Then you, it's gonna come on you. It's gonna come on you. It's gonna come on you. So it's, it's almost impossible. This is why Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, no one has ever been punished this crime of zina with the whipping or the stoning as a result of the four witnesses. It never happened. He said, in history, Ibn Taymiyyah said, it never happened, not even once. It never happened, not once. It never happened, not once. So, what's the other way that it happens? Why did the Prophet stone, uh, order for these women to be stoned? It's because they confessed. Why did they confess? Because they feel the guilt. They know, oh, I did this, Allah's gonna talk to me about it on the day of judgment. So they said, I'm ready to be whipped. I'm ready to be stoned. I, they wanted that. Even then it's not encouraged. It's better for you to seek repentance and, and inshallah ta'ala go on like that. But to show you that's how severe and evil the crime is, my beloved brothers and sisters. That they would say, Allah, and they would say, inflict this on me. Till today, Saudi Arabia, people who do who go to the judge and say, I did it, I did it. I fornicated. Punish me. Give me a punishment. You know, be stoned. Or they whipped and lashed or whatever have you. Till today it happens. To show you that's the evil of this punishment, brothers and sisters. And I said again, who gives this punishment is the leader. It's very quickly, the second thing Allah said in the ayah, when He said, when you whip them, He said, don't have mercy for them. Don't show pity on them. Why? Why? Why did Allah say this? Allah never said, when you cut the hand of the thief, don't show him pity. Why did Allah say, don't show pity to the fornicator? It's because Ibn Qayyim says in his Adda'u Dawa, this is the sin that everyone's kind of like laid back with. Everyone kind of feels sorry for the one who fornicates. And you know why? Because everyone inside of their heart has some kind of a motive to also do that crime. Have you never seen a woman in your life? Well, you know what? I could just do something for her. Everyone's guilty of this. Everyone's guilty. That's why you know the gates. That's why, you know, that's why it's hard on you. That's why it's hard on you. Right? Because everyone's kind of like, you know what? I kind of been, I almost did it myself. Or I kind of thought about it once. Or I thought maybe I should try it. Everyone's, like, maybe none of you thought about stealing. Maybe none of you thought about slapping your, your mom or your dad. Maybe that never came. But this something comes to everyone. And also, a lot of the times it happens because of ish, which is excessive love. And then everyone kind of, kind of feels sorry for the guy who's in love. The girl who's in love, she's like, she was in love, man. That's why she did that, man. She was in love. She was just crazy for the guy. So Allah had to go out of his way to remind you and say, no, no, don't, don't have pity for this person. Don't have pity. You might have that natural pity, that tabri pity. But the pity that causes you to not carry out the punishment, that's the one Allah is talking about, which is a problem. And finally, the third thing Allah said about this is that a group of people have to watch it. A group of people have to witness this crime. It's not as simple as just carrying out a punishment. No, you need to grab a group of people and say, hey, 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 you, you youngsters, come and watch this. Why? Why? So they see that that will happen to you if you do it. Three things. Number one, a person gets an emotional punishment by being exiled <laughs> and a physical punishment by being whipped or stoned to death. Number two, Allah said, don't have pity on a person. <laughs> this is not a joke. Carry this out. Thirdly, Allah said, let the people watch. Come, come, come. Watch this person being stoned. Watch this person being whipped. So you know this will happen to you if you do it. And Allah, brothers and sisters, I don't have time to mention to you. There's so many other punishments that will happen in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the people who make music halal, they make alcohol halal, make zina halal, and soup for men halal. They, these are all haram, they make it halal. Allah will punish them by placing a mountain on their heads and turning another group of them into monkeys. Do you not see a lot of these rappers, the way they move and the way they behave? Like monkeys. Look at the people who are making these songs about, about sex and filth. They have their trousers below their bottoms, right? Have you ever seen a baboon? A baboon's got his butt hanging out. And look at the way they move their hands and whatnot. Some of them make sounds like dogs. 
You got rappers that say what? And I might say I'm a, I'm a dog. I'm already deforming, you can see. <coughs> the, 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 the formation, the transformation, the evolution of a human to a pig and a monkey has already started because they do these sins. And what? Make music halal, zina halal, alcohol and silk. The kuffar have already made this for halal. Even the Muslims are starting it. They've already started to make music halal, say halal, hip hop, this, that, and the other. And then they started to put half naked girls or girls with tight clothes and makeup in their videos. And they're talking about Allah and the Prophet. These shaitans, they've already started to walk towards making zina halal as well. The Prophet said, What? Another punishment that will come is that Allah will send AIDS. Sorry, not AIDS. Allah will send a disease, the likes of which has never been seen before. Like AIDS. Did AIDS exist 70, 80 years ago? AIDS is a new disease. It came about because of the sexual intercourse and that spread amongst the people. So much wallahi. And in the, in the next life, what's waiting for you, brothers and sisters? The Prophet said, I saw a group of people who were naked. They were in a furnace. They were in a furnace. A furnace? What's a furnace? It's an oven. An oven. At the bottom, there was fire. They were naked, stripped naked. Men and women were standing there. And then the fire would blaze and they would roast and toast. And to the point, the fire would take them up and they would bring them back down. And kept, this would carry on, it kept carrying. The Prophet said, Ya Jibreel, who are these people? And Jibreel said, These are the men who did zina, the men who had sex outside of marriage, and the women who had sex outside of marriage. So this is serious. Just to end now, inshallah ta'ala, this genuinely is the end. Because we have to end on some hope. Because there might be some who've done this crime. There might be some who are watching this thing who have done this crime. And you have a merciful Lord who's willing to forgive you. In the ayah I told you where Allah mentioned shirk, murder, and zina, Allah said, Allah will multiply their punishment. They will stay in this punishment for eternity. The ones who done zina, that Allah gave an exception. There's one group, even though they did zina, even though they did this filthy act, even if they haven't been stoned, even if they haven't been whipped, they done it. Allah is not going to punish them. Who are they? Man tabda. They will repent say, Allah forgive me. Oh, I'm sorry. Man tabda. Wa aman. He believes. How does he believe? He believes according to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. His aqidah is correct. He doesn't do no bid'ah. He doesn't celebrate no mood. He doesn't know none of these things. He's not no shi'i. He's not no brilli, sufi, khariji. He's not no takfiri, ISIS support. No. His aqidah is correct. His aqidah is correct. He's not from these dodgy sex and groups, he's not like Ikhwani. He's, he's a Salafi, Sunni, the path of the Salafi Salafi. Mantaba, wa aman, he believes. He believes the correct belief. People celebrate in Modi. You need to be careful. And you might have fully game too, bro. You're the ones that the free mixing in your massaging. You need to be scared of Allah. Don't, don't come with these dodgy beliefs. No shit, no bid'ah. Correct belief. Wa amila, amalam. Then they do actions. What kind of actions? Salih and righteous actions. They do righteous actions, meaning they stop, they stop the zina. Now they pray, now they give zakat, now they fast. But then Allah say, You badil Allah, say ye ati him hasanat. Allah said, Allah will exchange, Allah will convert, Allah will turn their evil deeds into good deeds. It's like going to the money exchange. Have you ever traveled? Have you ever gone to a currency exchange? You go on holiday, <coughs> so you wanna go, so you wanna go to Saudi Arabia. You go you go to the currency exchange with pounds, it's him a pound. Imagine these pounds are sins. You say, hey, give me a real, give me dirham, give me dollars, give me euros, and then they exchange it for you. So it's like when you, when you, when you, when you, when you repent and you believe correctly and then you do righteous actions, Allah will say, okay, <coughs> let, let me take these sins. The zina, the murder, the fornication, the backbiting, the pornography, the masturbation, disrespecting your parents, or the kufr, the shit, the bida. Let me take all. And Allah said, I'm going to multiply it with the good deeds. You never did the good deeds, but Allah exchanged it for you anyway. And why did you do that? Okay, Allah will have for because he's forgiving and he's merciful, and that's what he does. And that's what he does. He's willing, he's willing to do that for you. This is why we say, look at the people who came to Islam who were non-Muslim and then they converted, they reverted to Islam. We say, look, imagine a guy was a disbeliever for 25, 30 years. 30, 30, 30 years upon kufr. The moment he became a Muslim, those 30 years got exchanged for him to good deeds. He didn't do nothing. He just came to Allah. That's the reward for repentance. So if Allah's going to do it for that, Allah's going to do it for what's less. And Imam Ibn Qayyim rahim Allah said, and to explain it, it's long because he goes into the language and the grammar, grammar of the ayah, he says that it's not that Allah will exchange one good deed for one bad deed. Allah will not say, okay, okay, let me take one evil deed and give you one good deed in return. No, for one bad deed, Allah will give you many good deeds in return. Allah will give you good deeds in return. Allah will exchange it for you. 
come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We didn't get to talk about how to protect yourself from zina and whatnot. Inshallah, I'll put a link to other videos. If you guys watch some YouTube, I'll put a link to other videos where we talk about that stuff. Inshallah, forgive me. I'll probably went over time, but I didn't talk about 56 minutes. Subhanakallah, Allah, we have a mixture of that and stuff. Anything good was from, correct from me, from Allah and the Prophet, and anything evil was from me and Shaitan.